infertility. Total infertility in plants and animals. Not just disease in a few herds, Mr. Bond, or the loss of a single crop, but the destruction of a whole strain forever throughout an entire continent. If my demands are not met, I shall proceed with a systematic extinction of whole species of cereals and livestock all over the world. Okay, I admit, I went with Blofeld to dodge internet rage, but if I was going to do it, I was going to do it on my own terms. Hence, I present you with Telly Savalas from Honor Majesty's Secret Service. But, before we get into why he's the best Blofeld, let's get into why Blofeld is ultimately the best Bond villain. Firstly, when you think of the concept of the Bond villain, the first image that enters into your head is... Yup! The image of Blofeld cradling his cat has always been the image that is invoked in people's minds when they think of the classic concept of the Bond villain. And as previously stated, the character has inspired many other villains in pop culture because the idea of an anonymous mastermind who runs a secret organization has always worked, even when it's a blatant knockoff. For as much as we love getting to know the motivations of a villain and seeing what makes them tick, we're even more intrigued by the villain we know nothing about, save for the fact that they are a bona fide threat. The fascinating thing about Blofeld is that, even when we see his face for the first time, the mystery is still there. And because he had such presence, we never wanted to be done with him. And even better, we weren't. So, now the big question. Of all the Blofelds, why Kojak? Because even though we still don't know much about Blofeld's background, this variation of the character had the most defined personality. No longer is he the cartoon character. No, he's a fully fleshed out and highly menacing mastermind whose capacity for evil seems to stem more of from a subdued apathy. His agenda is his own. There's no politics about this. He just wants to make the world kiss his feet. Sure, it's another hold the world to ransom bit, but when Blofeld lays his plan out to Bond, he does so like it's the most casual endeavor anyone could partake in. He intends to cause an ecological disaster, effectively tainting our food supply, and he treats it like a shopping trip. Just another errand he needs to run while he's getting a six pack for the game. Another thing that is worthy of note, while this Blofeld still has the dreaded man in the chair shtick down pat, he's not content to be just that. When there's a ski chase to be had, he's the one who's gonna lead it. He doesn't have the big burly henchman to fight Bond in the climax. Blofeld does it himself, and for extra measure, it happens to be in the midst of a crazy bobsled chase. And for anyone who's ever seen a bobsled run, they know that there are so many ways that can go wrong. Such as Blofeld getting clotheslined by a tree branch. Even that still doesn't deter Blofeld from taking part in a drive-by shooting which effectively kills Bond's wife on their wedding day. Ultimately, the personal toll that this all takes on Bond is the reason why Savalas' Blofeld takes both top spots. If you want to be technical, it's the only time the villain got one over on Bond. Sure, Bond curtailed Blofeld's scheme, but the ultimate price was considerably too steep. Bond's cradling his newly dead wife, shut up Pam, and Blofeld lives to scheme another day, effectively reminding Bond that in his line of work, there's no room for a normal, happy life. And the fact that it was Blofeld, and this variation thereupon, to have such a substantial impact on Bond in the grand scheme of the series, is enough for me to consider this the number one Bond villain. So, as we close the file on yet another double November, we can safely conclude that yes, Bond is nothing without the challenge of a formidable adversary, and what makes him so formidable is a strong combination of personality, ingenuity, ruthlessness, malice, apathy, and above all, they have to force Bond to push himself farther than he ever thought possible. And while Bond is the star of the show, the show is nothing without the conflict, the wit, and the intensity that these villains provide. And they are a major factor that has made the James Bond series the cinematic staple it has become. So, what would you like us to tackle next year? The ladies? The gadgets? The action sequences? The title sequences? Leave it in the comments below. And for more addictive content on Narcotic Casserole, simply like, share, subscribe, click... And thou shalt be served. A martini, shaken, not stirred. <laughs>